There is no choosing. It happens unconsciously, automatically, naturally. When I load into the game, I just know what to do to win. There can be no thought, because if there is a thought, there is a time of thought, and that means a flaw. I did play like four years without a trophy. For the right movement to occur, there must be permanent, totally alert awareness of the entire situation. It is that awareness itself that chooses the right stroke, technique, and body to execute it. The first Blood King brings three bloods into the top lane! And it's all over. It's fun for the viewers, right? If I yell, if I shout, if I say Kurva Majam Tole Hui! That's that's really fun, right? It's it's it's, it's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dance, that's why my Macarena looks so bad. No! 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 <laughs> Holy shit, but it's so hard to kill them together. Also call me the first love king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I will not tell you the secret! Fuck! Yes, Kurva! Yes, yes. I'm dead, I'm dead. <laughs> Dude, like, like, this is just so insane! Yeah, but I don't really need to, 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 to become a full-time streamer. All I have to do is just change my team and go to an A. Then I can be a full-time streamer, be washed up, and still win LCS. I mean, he's the best jungler that Europe has ever produced. Period. There's the Zenith Blade, the hand still doesn't have his flash from that earlier fight, and Jankos is on the board. He gets his first kill of the game. Well, Jankos is just in your face. 3 Z, these bad oh! but Lance the Q does Jankos. In 2019, when he stepped onto the world stage with G2 Esports, it was easy to forget that Marcin Jankos Jankowski wasn't always a single piece of an incredible puzzle. My gaming journey started when I started playing Dota on Warcraft 3. I saw League of Legends being played on Hyper TV. It's like a Polish gaming station. I, you know, thought to myself, maybe I should try it. It was pretty fun to me. When he finally got his shot at the big leagues in Season 4, it wasn't as part of a super team. He had to start from the bottom. In late 2013, Jankos put school on the back burner and qualified for the EU LCS with a Polish roster called KMT. The team signed with Rocket and made their debut in the 2014 Spring Split. Going on towards Mr. Rana, as a stoppable force finds him. He's already used that barrier and it's just not enough because the damage is pounding down. The double penetration of them is working wonders. They do manage to get four kills for zero. First game in the LCS and first win, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Like, it was pretty easy, I think. But even as he played his first ever week in the EU LCS, Yankos couldn't help being, well, Yankos. Did they not mean to pick Lee Sin there? I don't think they actually wanted to pick Lee Sin. Yeah, those Nexus, sorry, it's not lasting long. Nif, the last man left alive here for Alliance, is not enough to secure and save the game for them. It's Rockout that goes three for one. Yeah, like, uh, I was supposed to pick Vi, but I just trolled my team a bit. <laughs> the team said they were gunning for a top five spot in the spring split, and they exceeded their own expectations, placing third behind Fnatic and SK Gaming. It's the game for Rockout, ladies and gentlemen. They will take third place in the spring split. But a trend was already developing for the young jungler, and key to that success was Yankos' own aggressive style, which he'd modeled after the renowned jungler Diamond Prox. I just don't think the passive playstyle is good right now and it's just so boring to watch, you know, when the jungler is just farming. And when I looked at Diamond, every time invading enemy jungle, like uh, ganking everywhere, killing everyone, it's just so cool to watch. As he terrorized the opposition with sudden aggression, it was clear that he wasn't just good. He was a standout jungler in the region, even on a team that otherwise might have been on the relegation bubble. So we're going a little bit though, there's a super mega death rocket. Jankos is going to come in for this one. The barrier already used a flash there from Candy Panda. Rebel from Jankos and he gets the finisher. While Jankos was good enough to turn heads, Rockat as a whole 
was not. Well, the Nexus turrets have already fallen. That is an open Nexus now for them to finish off. They look like they want a few more kills, but they turn their focus to it, finish off the game, and move through into the grand final tomorrow. When it came to team fights, again, they they were just so much stronger. I think SK can almost count themselves a little bit lucky there that Rockout were also a little sloppy with things. The team did not qualify for Worlds, but Yankos tried his damnedest to drag them over the finish line. This is actually really, really dangerous. Peke going low. Behind Yankos. Stone, Yankos coming in. Manages to get the kill on Peke. Yellow Star might go down as well. It's a double for Yankos. Might be in trouble again. There's still oh, only four members. Yeah. Overpower did manage to get his ultimate rewind in there as Reckless going to get pulled in. Yankos over on the backside trying to go for Soas. The bomb will be enough. Reckless gets bombed as well. Can they get any more? Yankos steps away from the bubble. Sazza's trying to get in. Can Vandalay? Oh, he does match range onto Peke. Peke's down. Yellowstone's gonna fall here to Yankos. And now Cyanide sliding in to try and help out the support and maybe get away from the chasing team, but I don't think he's gonna. Another okay. ban from Vanda. Okay. And that is four men down for Fnatic. The very first ban from Fnatic was also the Elise targeting that at Yankos. And he picks up Kha'Zix in the first round of picks from Rocket and he just delivers once again. Yankos is far and away the hard carry for Rocket. In spring 2015, Yankos experimented with a new, more cautious play style. It didn't work. Even with the addition of mid laner Nuke Duck, the team finished eighth, and after they survived relegation, Yankos decided to return to his aggressive ways in the summer. I tried to play more aggressive, you know? Like last split, I tried to play with the brain, and it was like bad, you know? I should play without brain and just like follow my instinct and just kill people. But summer 2015 was the last split Yankos would play with Rockat. Before the 2019 season, G2 Esports was working with a powerful roster that Yankos had helped to the World Semifinals. But they didn't stay the course. They took that team and supercharged it. And the most surprising change was the addition of Caps. I found G2 looked the most interesting. Uh, I feel like their playstyle is very... like it's, They play the same kind of way that I want to play. Uh, they have like a very aggressive mindset. And they are okay with making mistakes as long as they're like proactive. And it meant being in a team that, for once, had plenty of carry potential outside of the jungle. I felt like in Spring Split last year, I was playing very well. And I felt like in Summer Split, we were playing too much of Final, and I was put on tanks a lot. So I was not as used to playing my own game. But now, since we have a very good players in our team, I'm, I can choose my own champion that I want to play and I feel like that suits me way more. Yankos had long been the best jungler to never even see a final in the EU LCS playoffs, a streak that G2 helped him break in spring 2019 as they took it all. G2 Esports are looking at the Nexus. Origin, they're trying to fight back, but they cannot do it. Origin are crumbling to G2. Europe kneels to its champion, G2 Esports. The world awaits G2. I think I was really calming game by the end of game three because I knew that we will win. Um, so right now I'm actually don't, I'm not very emotional. I'm just very happy that we won, I guess. But my eyes are on MSI because I never ever played against Faker in a serious game. And even though I'm a jungler, I kind of want to go to MSI and play, you know. And at MSI 2019, he had the chance to prove he was among the world's best. Go on MSI stage and play against the only very best teams in the world. And I want to represent Europe uh, at MSI and I want to make us proud. I don't want to get out of groups and win the whole thing. I think it's possible. I think this team has the talent to do so. And I'm just very excited to, to go to Korea. So, can't wait. G2 Esports already had plenty of experience with disappointing international finishes. But in 2018, they made it all the way to world semifinals. And expectations were higher than ever. It's very rare where you see a super team that come in and they just gel almost immediately. Because doing a good job body blocking that shuriken, making sure so they can't do anything else. Ning gonna be tanking the turret aggro here for now. The shot is gonna be oh. eaten. The turret shot! Yankos might be able to make it too! Ladies and gentlemen, for the first Blood King brings three bloods into the top lane just five minutes in! In the early days, Yankos got attention for his uncanny ability to take advantages in the early game. The community began to idolize his knack for securing first blood. Eventually, he earned the moniker of First Blood King. All Yankos was known for 
First Blood King. First Blood goes over to Jankos once again. Sign idea is going to be able to get the kill back though onto Zazas to trade one for one. But again, Jankos, First Blood Master. Red Bull taking away. Cock next gets side. He's going to be forced to flash away. He's into the pit. Jankos follows through and gets himself First Blood. He's in trouble. Jankos comes around. He can just take his time with the cocoon here. He's going to send the spider. Doesn't need it. First, no, bit. first Blood. Once again goes the Jankos striker. Protect their record. But the First Blood King, his style already well established, was about to face a new kind of challenge. Back in 2015, when I was still in Rockat, we didn't do well throughout the whole year. Then I decided that maybe it's time to change the roster, maybe it's time to move on, and maybe it's time to look for other opportunities. Yankos joined H2K Gaming, where he played in 2016 along Star 80 Carry Forgiven. Both players were known for being a little cocky. Do you feel right now that you have the most skill in, in all the bottom lanes? By far. By far. I think like the real tournament starts tomorrow because like all the NA teams are out. So like now it's going to be competitive. Finally, both players had been at one point or another the primary carry option on their previous teams. They both had clearly defined play styles that had earned them success in the past, but it was Yankos that would be forced to adapt. With Forgiven is that he would have the same playstyle and he wouldn't change it. So no matter what kind of draft you would make, you would always have to be aware that your bot lane is going to like kind of push and try to punish your opponent. So <clears throat> that made the opponent's jungler's movements obvious because he mm -hmm. had to help his bot. But like when that six turrets f fell, like it was so clueless, you know? Like, the team was clueless and he was clueless what to do on the map. This didn't mean an end to aggression, but it did mean that the creative plays for which Yankos was known were a little more predictable. It also didn't mean an end to the usual Yankos antics. Yes, kurva! <laughs> I will play better next time. I'm so wait, sorry. Wait, no one's talking to you, Yankos. <laughs> Yankos, you're not allowed. Please to. wait your turn. Yes! Yes! I'm there, I'm there. I think if we kill their carries, they can win. I expect it. Did you splash? Eh? No? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You have Don't no worry. worry. Don't worry. No one has to know that. But H2K's spring showed clear issues. Yankos played very well yet again, making the second All-Pro team alongside his team's top and AD carry. But playoffs saw H2K throw away a semifinals bye and finish fourth. Is this Fnatic are looking for the Nexus! They're on to a Nexus turret! The crowd is on their feet and losing it! Suddenly, Forgiven was out and Freeze was in. But as H2K earned fourth place during the summer season, Freeze suffered a wrist injury that brought Forgiven back to the roster for playoffs. Their semi-final exit was good enough to punch a ticket to Worlds. What happened next surprised nearly everyone, as H2K, Europe's second seed, fought their way to Worlds semi-finals. Is Odo gonna get himself killed? A miracle! Walk we'll like one, but the Nexus is open! Forgiven! He's been exhausted, they're gonna try something here, but Forgiven! They'll cut it out, and H2K demolish ANX for their semi-final match versus Samsung Galaxy. But even with good early play from the First Blood King, Korea would monopolize the finals. And there's nothing that they can do. A 3-0 sweep of Europe's H2K will send Samsung Galaxy to the World Final. But Yankos' trip to Worlds, even if he was knocked out in the semis, wasn't a waste. The First Blood King had learned how to adapt his play style when needed, how to take feedback, and what kind of player he did and didn't enjoy playing with. When it comes to like Forgiven, we could count on him, except for team fights, because he would not trust anyone in the team. That's how I felt like. And I it was see. not because of the players, for sure, 100% I'm certain. That's just his playstyle. He just doesn't trust me. Uh, I mean, not me, but like everyone. All in all, he was a, for sure a really good player. Would I consider playing with him again? No, I wouldn't want to play with him again, personally. In 2019, untethered from one linear playstyle, Yankos could play his way with a team that trusted him completely. But I think that G2 is actually more than the sum of their parts. They're intelligent. Mm -hmm. And the fact that with that fine tooth comb, you learn more and more about what League of Legends is and can be, is to me just a huge shout out to G2. They came in, they were an incredibly aggressive team because they knew if there's a play being made through Yankos, everyone's rotating in on the play. And at MSI, 
it all came together. G2 Esports are teleporting into the base. They're looking for the Nexus turrets with the Baron empowered minions. Nexus turret number one falls. Nexus turret number two is being focused. That's Martin dead. Teddy flashes away. That's not over yet. The Nexus turret falls. Ladies and gentlemen watching MSI, do you believe G2 obliterate SKT? Hopeful to get something here in the midst of the fight. That's the two-man taunt. Cap's gonna try to end the game. It could just go out here. Can they do it? They can't stop it. G2 come out on top. G2 just walking over flash rolls. You knew it had to happen. They find the ace, the Nexus, right in front of them. And G2, three and one to close out day two. It's gonna be a very hype. And we need to see whether or not SK Telecom or G2 Esports will have a shot at the title. Wow, look at Caps. He's coming in from outside of Vision. Lone Skew has already caught Mata. He's going to fight time. Mickey gets a three man taunt. Caps is waiting for the ultimate for that. Khan throws down the Maelstrom and uses the Hourglass. That's a shutdown on Wonder. He can't do more, but it's a trade. Top laner for top laner. Another fantastic taunt from Mickey. Three more die in favor of G2. Khan has managed to make it to the river. Caps has thrown down a ward. He's got vision. The claw will tag Mata. Mickey's going to be in range as well. There's no flash available. And he may need to just his punch over the wall. Baron has been interrupted. Teddy is trying to step forward. The taunt is going to come out. Caps is trying to find the kill. Mata's in trouble. Fake is low. But they've already got one out of Mata. Where is Teddy? Follow his HP bar. Khan flashes over the wall. Teddy's dead. Yankos is in the pit. G2 Esports have been gifted and donated a Baron from SKT. That's a dunk from Wonder. Death from below for the double, for the ace, for the Baron. Champions can fall. Gods can bleed. Where were you when the West rose up? to conquer champions. G2 Esports eliminates SK Telecom. Welcome to the finals of the 2019 Mid-Season Invitational. And who would have believed it was North America's Team Liquid versus Europe's G2 Esports. They're going to go. Ooh, they're going on Nick Smithy. They know Devil isn't there. The slow is there on a Tom Kench. He can eat for a little bit, but he's going to be knocked up. And here comes the TVs from everyone else. They try to buy some time, but Cordia J is going to die yet again. No TV for Devil instead of Swain here. And the Gangplank as well. The barrels come in, but there's no chain. He's going to flash back to safety. The knock I'm coming in! They're gonna get yet another one! A double kill for Perk! I believe we have five minutes until Baron, but the mid lane's already there. That bastard of defense just being shut down. One kill picked up ready to expit me. And look out for Jensen rooted. Shockwave is not gonna be enough. They trade one for at the end of it all. And now Yanko's able to walk away off that kill. And G2 ripped through the hearts of Team Liquid and North American fans as they secure themselves in the top of the world. There is no chance TL comes back from this. They're already on to the Nexus turrets. This is what peak League of Legends looks like, and it comes from Europe. A world record. G2 Esports 3-0 will win MSI 2019. Yankos and G2 did the unbelievable at MSI 2019. Suddenly, the gap seemed like it had closed, and Yankos was part of a team that was breaking all the rules even as it dominated the competition. Yeah, I mean, I guess it just feels pretty good to be able to leave the trophy on international stage. This year is my first time that I won the split in Europe, and I also won a trophy on international stage, so I'm really happy, you know, to be in this team, be a part of this team, and just enjoy it. Yankos became a key part of the greatest European team in League of Legends history. And MVP voters agreed, choosing him as the MVP for summer 2019 as he brought out old favorites like Elise and Jarvin. Thank you guys. I, lo I love Athens. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you for voting for me. I appreciate it. No problem. There you go. Congratulations, Jankos. But they had won everything in 2019 except Worlds. And there, it wouldn't be enough to be mechanically gifted. Yankos would need the mental fortitude to hold firm under the highest pressures the game can offer. 2016's trip to Worlds had been an incredible, if surprising, step for Yankos. First time of my life, I could face the best players in the world. I could, uh, you know, try myself against them, see if I'm better, like, what do I lack still? It was great. It was like probably the best year of my pro career just yet. But though Yankos was clearly one of the best mechanical junglers in Europe, he had a secret. He was a tilter. Torby. If you play and you tilt and you go with the tilt, like the more, basically like you get more mad as you play because you drive yourself crazy. So 
Yeah, you probably should not do that because it's useless. It will not win you the game. Gankos had spent much of his early career as his team's number one option for victory, but that meant he also carried a big mental burden. We just counted on me getting ganks off, so I would just have no game plan whatsoever back, in, back then, and I would just run around the map and hope that I would get kills, and if I wouldn't, then I would be considered that I'm choking and I'm not playing well, right? Though H2K added star mid laner Febivin, it was not enough to get them close to either a playoffs final, something Yankos had yet to experience, or back to Worlds. It is the 3-0, it is the third seed, it is Fnatic back on the world stage. Despite that, Yankos credits H2K with providing him something that helped him become a better player. They arranged for sports psychologist sessions to work through his mental game. We had a sports psychologist in uh, H2K, so I would talk to him and try to improve my performance when it comes to handling emotions on stage, handling emotions like in scrims and just being in my, always like in my prime or like in my zone. Uh -huh. you know? So maybe that kind of helped me as well. Yegos is the greatest jungler that Europe has ever produced, but maybe it's because he did his fair share of losing first. I remember just going out of those series after 2017 being like, you know what, Yankos actually played well individually, but the team had already fallen apart and were just way worse than whatever they played against. Yankos could have walked away from some of these series in 2017 and told himself, well, I played fine. Instead, he put in the work on his mentality. It's tough because, you know, it's like, a lot on your mental strength and without mental strength you cannot probably be the best in the world simply because you know you will probably lose one or two games to like the second best team or something and if you you know break in those two three games then that's it you know you lost the whole series because in fifth game in fourth game in third game you will just not perform as well as you should have but he also received second-hand insight from one of the game's best when he attended all-stars 2016. what did he say what did you talk about what he said, you know, to me, Fee, not to me, was that Europe doesn't know how to lose. And I think this sentence is very important. Doesn't is, know how to lose. Yeah. Because I do believe that Korean teams, when they lose, they can improve so much from it and they don't give up on emotions. So many people in Europe, including me, react on emotions a lot. Yeah. And that's what makes it hard to like strive for victory and you know, everyone is emotional, so after you lose, you're down, and then mm -hmm. you have one or two days bad of screams. You let the lose affect you, and they don't do it, you know? Europe had learned to lose. Now, it was time for Yankos to again show Faker that Europe had learned to win, too. After a grueling run through groups and an astonishing win against Damwon Esports in the quarterfinals, Yankos once again played against and defeated one of his idols. The greatest team in the history of League of Legends, taken down by the greatest team Europe has ever produced. FPX, get ready, G2 is heading to Paris. Yankos, who had not seen a final of any kind in the first three years of his EU LCS career, would play in the world's final. Unfortunately, it would not be the result he hoped for. The Nexus is being focused, it's going down, and Fun plus Phoenix are your world champions! But even as they were swept 0-3 by Fun plus Phoenix, the mentality on stage was vintage Yankos. As they were completely blown out in the second game, they did something that many didn't expect and some even maligned. They laughed it off. Oh, Guys, I, I really like that we are embracing it at this point. <laughs> we are really like having fun right now, are we not? And though Yankos didn't lift the Summoner's Cup, he didn't let the loss slow him down. He was an important part of the team's fourth straight European Championship. He was the LEC Spring 2020 MVP, a second split in a row. The Yankos are split MVP, a, a, just an indomitable performance by G2. They were exceptional from start to finish. And most importantly, he was still Yankos. I do feel like I'm, you know, super old for a pro player because I'll be 25 this year. But at the same time, as long as I don't play really bad or I, I can like keep up like a high level and G2 doesn't actually kick me for a younger player, I were to leave G2, I would probably leave G2 for, um, not necessarily for a better team, right? But right now I'm just chilling and winning, so I'm happy. 
Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.